Sometimes you want your cocktail to be a little fancy, a little classy. Ginger, almond, gin, passion fruit, and a little champagne. Mr. Fancy Pants Cocktail will make that happen for you. All right, here we are. We are on cocktail number four that we submitted for the Iowa Restaurant Association's Mixology Championship. Yep. Yep. Spoiler, it is our favorite one. They're all good, trust me. They all have its place, but we already like sour things. Mm -hmm. And I knew when we went to Flavor Town, sour had to be one of the flavors we went to. Mm -hmm. And this hits that note very well. Yes. And this is another cocktail that was basically created during another one of our live streams yep. that just floored us when we tried it. And I knew I had to make a cocktail at that time with it. Yep. But then when the contest came, I knew that this would fit perfectly into that realm. Right. We just had to figure out how to use one of the sponsored liquors. And one of the sponsored liquors was... Aviation Gin? No. Yes, <laughs> that was one of them. And we chose not to use not that to one. Not to do that one because it's just not for us. And the other one was Zardetto. Private Reserve Cuvée. It's a sparkling wine. Yep. Brute, I think. Yep. Um, and so I knew that one would probably, when I first saw that at first glance, I was like, ah, oh, that's gonna be tricky. I don't you drink a lot of either champagnes, brutes, Proseccos. I don't, we don't drink a lot of that. In champagne cocktails, all kind of feel the same. You mm -hmm. got your mimosas, your bellinis, your... Yeah, whatever else. Everything and else in that same family that ends fruit up Fruit juice and, spark and sparkles. Yep. Um, but then I remembered we had made, during our Porn Star Live uh, video, we made... Uh, porn Star Martini Mar Live stream. Porn <laughs> <laughs> Words matter here, folks. <laughs> <laughs> um, we... We used gin instead of vanilla vodka and made this amazing sour. Mm -hmm. And then I saw a video from Cocktail Time with Kevin Koss where he did a porn star martini and a champagne foam. And then all of a sudden I was like, by one day I'm just like, that's it. That's it. We're going to take that gin, sour, porn star martini drink that we kind of made and add the champagne foam and make it to our own. Mm -hmm. And so we played around with the different, you know, variations of it. Mm -hmm. And then we, you know, lime juice. And then I knew orgeat would go really well with it. Yeah. Kind of give it a creaminess, but with that almond in there too. And then we took out the passion fruit puree because it made it a little bit heavier and we were looking for something lighter. Light and refreshing. And as you can see by it in the glass, it you can almost see through it. Right. And then um, we tried that. It worked well. The champagne foam was great because, uh, and then... It was missing something. I just knew it needed a little bit of kick, and then we decided to use that ginger, uh, that Catan ginger. And I had to use more than you think you would use, but it just adds a nice little snap in yeah. there. So, are you ready to try this? Mm -hmm. I've Mr. been waiting all week. Mr. Fancy Pants. Think. Mm. Oh. It's even better than I thought it was. Right. We haven't had these since my drink competition, which was like a month ago. Right. And oh, it's so good. It's so refreshing. This is a this is a summer sipper or mm -hmm. like upgrade your bridal party day of wedding mm -hmm. cocktail. Just want something light and refreshing to pound or sip on or just have because you want it. So the whole reason with the champagne film, instead of just putting champagne in the cocktail, when you put just champagne in the cocktail, all you do is kind of taste champagne once, and then that kind of taste is kind of basically done throughout it for the most part. Mm -hmm. With the champagne foam, it adds stability to it, and then every sip you're getting smells and the taste of the champagne first. So this will last basically throughout the whole cocktail, and just gives it that first dimension mm -hmm. of, of a great tasting cocktail. Right. It's very similar to having a garnish on top of your glass, so you get the same smell. It's yep. it's essentially a garnish, but it's also there because it does taste very good. Right, exactly. And plus, it is kind of cool if you did that at a bar or something like that. People would be like, "Ooh, what is that?" Right. It's, again, it's it's kind of a showstopper thing. It's like mm -hmm. it's it's a discussion. The reason we ended with this is like the dead Elvis. I don't want something super sweet and heavy at the end of the night. I want something light and refreshing that I know that can easily be di digestible depending on how long my night's been going on. Right, and it is sweet enough. Right. To be a dessert cocktail, but it's also... Yeah, it's like when you get those fresh fruit desserts with yeah. all the fresh fruits, like, you know, like a key lime pie or something like right. that. You know, it's not heavy. It's still light, airy, 
but you still get that satisfaction. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Trying so hard not to just pound this yeah, right I know. Now. So if you want to check out all the other cocktails we did, I have a playlist over here called Iowa Mixology 2021. You can check out all the other three. Let us know what would be your favorite out of all four of them in the comments below. Cheers, everyone. Cheers. Thank you.